Okay, let's talk for a minute about some of those trends that we can look at as we scope out the territory and try to identify where new opportunities might come from. These are short, medium, long term. Things that change, change the environment, are changing the landscape and allow us to think more clearly about where we might enter in with a new opportunity, a new business, a new venture that could create a business long term. Now, one of the reasons why it's important to think trends is that you could find something that you open up down the street because of some short term thing. But it has nothing to do with a long-term event or changing demographic, changing tastes or demand. And therefore, it never really takes off and, in fact, goes away. You want to find things that are just starting, some new idea, new trend, new opportunity, things that are growing, more people are going to want them, where that demand is likely to grow over time. That's when you look for, you see a longer-term opportunity that you can get in on the ground floor. The first of these that we normally think about is technology. You can look around, you can see social media, you can see electric cars, you can see 3D printers, you can see the internet and higher and higher speed internet, you can see self-driving cars, um, you can see drones floating around taking pictures and all that sort of thing. You see massive amounts of data online. These all different kinds of technologies that are starting to become commonplace. But they're likely to only be at the beginning stages of this growth cycle. That's what you're trying to identify. What are these new inventions that weren't around before that are creating this creative destruction that we talked about in the, the um, theoretical framework, Schumpeter's creative destruction, what are some of these technological changes and how can I get a piece of that, right? How can I as a startup take advantage of this trend that's occurring? Doesn't necessarily mean you invent a new technology. It just could be you put them together in a different ways. Recent company has come out with a actual touch screen or touch pad like a Blackberry phone that wraps around your iPhone because some people don't like these soft keyboards. They'd rather have a nice, hard, clicky keyboard. So that sort of fits in there, and you can actually have a clicky keyboard. It's a bit of a technology, but it's not wildly a, a new invention. But it takes advantage of this idea that lots of people are having soft keyboards, and there may be a niche that people that don't like them. Drones could be flying all over the place, you know, these things that could be, you could send a message to your friend, Amazon is talking about delivering packages with, with drones. What does that mean in terms of another opportunity, a business opportunity associated with that? Um, maybe keeping track of drones or, or giving uh, something that will detect drones around your house so you know if there's any flying around there. You know, if you see something, you'll know what it is. Who knows what opportunities there are? But these are the idea of trends associated with technology. Clearly, drones have just started since uh, they've been used in, in warfare in, uh, in Afghanistan, for the most part, in Pakistan. So it's a relatively new thing. I went around before. So you, as, as well as anyone else, might identify an opportunity that could become a long-term business for you to develop and to grow. Another thing that happens is economic and political regulatory trends. Um, this um, recently, if you watch the news, there was a chemical spill in a West Virginia uh, river that polluted or caused the drinking water and all the potable water to be corrupted, and people couldn't use it. Uh, that particular plant wasn't wasn't uh, regulated since uh, 19. It wasn't inspected since 1991, 1992. Um, it's likely there'll be new regulations associated with those kinds of things. It might be that you could come up with an opportunity to find new ways of finding regulatory, way, regulatory um, effects or create a regulatory service or whatever to inspect these kinds of things because new regulations might come on board. New regulations might happen with respect to organic uh, foods. Uh, there's all sorts of possibilities. Political changes when 
um, administration changes from Democrat to Republican, Republican to Democrat, there may be different ways the government deals with industry, with companies, and that may lead to some opportunities. And of course, economically, if trade rules are passed, might increase, increase pricing, allow manufacturing in the US. If you have contacts in another country, in the Pacific Rim, there's currently legislation to allow a free trade zone between the US and some Pacific countries, um, Indonesia and like. Um, in that particular case, then there might be opportunities if you have relationships there to create an environment or to create a company that has trade across those, uh, those boundaries. So uh, economic, political, and regulatory shifts are another trend that you could capitalize on. Thirdly, we have social and demographic trends. What does this mean? People change as they grow older. They change as they, uh, or they come from different cultures and backgrounds. If the immigration legislation that's being described, again, this relates to political and regulatory, but if that changes more, you have more uh, immigration in the US, uh, perhaps more Spanish speaking and uh, Mandarin speaking people coming to the United States, there would be opportunities for uh, ethnic and uh, cultural uh, businesses that support that, certain kinds of clothing, certain kinds of food, uh, other kinds of, um, of products and services that support those kinds of industries. Um, also, as the population gets older, there's opportunities for things that support uh, folks living in assisted living homes and the like. One of the most important ones for your generation is to realize that because you grew up with an, entire, an entirely new platform of technologies with social media, smartphones from, the, from probably the day you were born, you have all this interconnectivity that people that are older don't necessarily use in the same enlightened way that you do. And as you enter the workforce, there's going to be opportunities for business services and other kinds of businesses just to support this new wave of employees that are able to utilize these technologies or to train older employees on how to use the technologies that become the dominant force in the workplace as your generation takes over as the main workforce for the economy. So that's the social and demographic ways, changes that occur that you can lock into. And then there's the market changes. This is changes in fashion, Super Bowl or some event like that coming to the area, the Oscars, what someone's wearing on the, on the red carpet. All these have effects that if you're able to identify or know what's coming or how people's tastes might change over time, you're able to enter products or services that perhaps capitalize on those changes. So these are the main categories that you want to think about. Markets, economic and social, economic and political, technology, and then social and demographic. I think I mentioned in an earlier lecture, these, you could use these, the, the heuristic of thinking of um, METS for that, M-E-T-S, to remember these. Um, there are some others, but you can generally categorize them under these four. So what you want to think about when you think about your business opportunity and moving forward, you want to say to yourself, how does this fit into this trend? Ideally, when there's two of them, a technology and a political trend that come together, and maybe a social and demographic trend, like a Spanish Siri or something that translates Spanish to English, English to Spanish, that sort of thing. It takes advantage of two or more trends that have a long-term implication that will increase in demand over time. That's where you have a real advantage. Because even when you jump in, it's not going to be competition. There'll be five, six, ten different companies, and you can all be successful because that trend is so large and is developing so quickly. So that's the sort of thing that we look at when we think about trends that give us opportunities. There's also a market dynamic and how that market dynamic plays out to make advantage or disadvantage, and that's what we'll talk about next.